We are in the state of Victoria, Australia, and this railway line was built in 1874. A small town in the distance, grain handling facilities, is Denali. After the First World War, railways were also used for visual navigation. On July 14, 1920, Leslie Nobby Clark followed this line, flying his plane to the goldfields town of Denali. He circled a couple of times to make sure he was the centre of attention. No doubt about that. Aircraft had been seen before, but nothing, nothing so low as this encircling the town. Then he landed, but that was never the plan. Clark's Airco D86 biplane was designed by Geoffrey de Havilland. This type was used during the Great War as a training aircraft. About 2,300 were built, commencing in 1916, but its handling characteristics were strongly criticised. You see, it was very, very easy to fly. Too easy, so easy it was named the Skyhook. Trainee pilots then transferred to fighter planes, which were not so easy. There resulted two types of pilots, those with some talent for flying and those who dramatically proved that they didn't. A requirement for selling a product is to have customers. Aeroplanes drew excited crowds and could be used as tools for sales representatives. A whole new type of selling. The public interest is obvious. Locals may have seen aeroplanes in the district but rarely this close. This picture of the Astor radio plane was taken at Bialaba Racecourse in 1929. The Semco Art Needlework Company plane visited Bialaba in 1930. In a world where aviation is now commonplace, can any of us possibly imagine in 1920, after the despair of the war, the excitement and wonder of being up close to such a machine, and maybe, just maybe, the chance to fly? There was a range of people and events outside of Denali that led up to our story. So we'll have a brief introduction. Charles Pratt is part of the complex history of pioneer aviation in Australia. During the Great War, he was in the Australian Flying Corps. He was an avid photographer and left a large collection, many of which are online in the State Library of Victoria. In late 1919, Pratt was returning to his New Zealand home on a ship called the Kui. He had some aeroplanes on board. In this picture taken on board the Kui, Charles Pratt is in the back row. Pratt got as far as Melbourne, but found himself stranded by a union dispute. In Geelong in 1920, there was a committee determined to promote Geelong as a place to do business and live post-World War I. Also in 1920, the Prince of Wales was going to visit Geelong, so there was a lot happening there then. Pratt's adventures in Geelong aspirations set the background for Denali to have it the town's first aeroplane visit and the first known cinema screening. To the right of the tail in the background we have a mysterious large mullock dump from a gold mine. We also have a picture of a contented cow lying in a patch of winter sunshine. We'll call her Bessie. In July 2012 Ken and Mary Hanley donated some photographs to the Denali Museum. By the way, the building goes all the way to the back of the block. Two of the pictures were taken by Macklin, the Denali photographer. One shows a DH-6 aircraft and the other a cow. We wondered about the cow. Why would you bother? We wondered about the plane because the photographer's Denali studio suggested the pictures were taken somewhere nearby. Kevin O'Reilly is an aviation historian who has written some books. The first in just five years is about the RAAF base in Nil, Victoria. Then Flyers of Time, a history of pioneering aviation in the western half of Victoria that really should be made into a TV action series. We knew he was working on a third book titled Charles Pratt of Belmont Common. We sent him a copy of the DH-6 plane photograph. Kevin used the Macklin plane picture in his Charles Pratt book. We learned our mystery plane picture was one of Pratt's aeroplanes. Importantly, Kevin had some clues in the text and an approximate date. We realised that the museum's microfilm newspaper records might just cover that period. They did. We found the story of the first aeroplane to visit Denali, but the location remained a mystery. 
From Kevin O'Reilly's book, we learn at war's end, Charles Pratt purchased four aeroplanes and was shipping them to New Zealand on the Kui to start an aviation service in Wellington. He reached Melbourne in December 1919, where industrial trouble with ship engineers caused the Kui to be stranded at Victoria Dock, now part of Docklands. While living on the ship, his pedestrian excursions brought him into contact with other aviators returned from the war who also found they were unemployed heroes. Planes were seen as a novelty, a public amusement, and not very useful. Pratt was on good terms with the ship's Captain Mackenzie. Pratt was able to have one of the DH-6 planes in its crate, number C-7625, unloaded in late December. It's the one at the back in this picture. The ship's engineers assisted him with assembly. Without any form of testing, there exists a harrowing description in Kevin's book of how Pratt accelerated between the buildings over the cargo it was there that lined either side of the central pier at Victoria Dock. He took off, then shortly after landed at Matthew Carey's aerodrome at nearby Fisherman's Bend. At the time, registration or pilot's license did not exist, but there were some terribly upset customs officers. Pratt was told Geelong presented aviation opportunities and no competition. Can't help wondering if that was a polite go away. In early February 1920, Charles Pratt met another flyer, Englishman Leslie Nobby Clark, also Australian Flying Corps. They set up an aviation business providing joyrides operating from Belmont Common, Geelong. Over the next few months, they did considerable business with that one aeroplane. Industrial action finally ceased and the Kui moved to Sydney. Pratt's three other planes were still on board. In May 1920, Pratt went to Sydney and after a period of bureaucratic warfare, the aeroplanes in their crates were sent by train to Geelong. While this was happening, Clark was meeting with the Geelong Publicity Scheme organisers, which was to include aerial motion pictures to promote Geelong as a place to set up business. The Geelong visit by the Prince was on June 1, 1920 and Pratt and his plane escorted the train from Melbourne to Geelong, which was filmed from the air. That royal visit was the origin of various roads becoming the Princess Highway, the same prince who later became king, but abdicated to marry American Wallace Simpson, divorcee, twice. Charles Pratt was also into motorcycles as well as planes. Here he is on the Princess Highway before traffic jams, or bitumen for that matter. Her brother, Frank, was a champion racer of motorcycles, and yet... Another brother, Percy, was a champion and pioneer of gliding, but had better get back on track. In Geelong, a second DH-6 was assembled, number C-1972. The plane at front in this picture, and the one shown in the Denali picture. This plane had two test flights, both on July 8, 1920. On July 12, the Geelong promotion tour began using that very plane. Captain Clark made a delivery of light merchandise to Hawkes Brothers in Clunes, claimed to be the first commercial use of an aeroplane. Clark didn't make it in one go. He was forced to land at Meredith due to low fuel. Strong headwinds? When he came back to the plane from organising fuel, he found numerous names had been scratched into what was the clean white paintwork, with several innocent-looking children surrounding the plane. Clark met up with Mr Caffrey, manager of the Geelong publicity tour and the Geelong promotional items being transported by train. After Clunes, the tour, train and plane were to go to Maribor, St Arnold, Donald, Birchip and Oyen. Denali was not on the visiting list. The Ballarat Star of Monday, July 19 tells us Clark was not happy with the landing ground at Maribor, so he flew to Denali. From the Denali newspaper reported, it's easy to determine that Wednesday, July 14th, 1920, was the day Clark came to Denali. For the first time, Denali was visited on Wednesday afternoon by an aeroplane, and the visit created widespread interest and among the young folks a great deal of excitement. Once or twice, aeroplanes have passed at some distance, but on this occasion, the aerial visitor, which arrived in the vicinity just before 2 o'clock, gave abundant time for inspection. Coming from the southward, the sound like a combination of whir, rattle and drone could be heard while the aeroplane was some distance off, and there was a rush everywhere for the open air. 
It swept over Denali, passing to the northward, and then returned and circled over the town at a height so low that it was very clearly seen. Then it passed on and alighted in Mrs. Dawson's paddock northward of the town, dipping gradually and gracefully till it landed. A crowd had been watching in the recreation reserve, and the aeroplane was rapidly followed to the place of descent. The throng was delighted that such an opportunity of a close examination had been presented. Later during the afternoon, the aeroplane circled time after time over the town, at a lower and lower altitude, a near view of the machine in motion being afforded. The veteran Mr. E. Morris, J.P., had prevailed upon the gentleman in charge to give him a trip in the air, and he had the experience which so few can enjoy of being conveyed through the air to the race course at Western Denali, where another landing was effected. Mr. Morris was cheered and congratulated on having succeeded in his ambition. The machine kept circling over the town till dusk, watched by very many and several passengers were taken for trips. The weather was perfect for the exhibition. This visit was in connection with the Geelong publicity tour, for which the residents of Geelong raised the funds throughout Victoria in the interests of Geelong and Australian manufacturers and products. Geelong is to be commended for its public spirit and enterprise in this matter. It is a populous and thriving centre, not only in connection with shipping, but in the establishment of a splendid industrial trading and other concerns. Formerly, Geelong was regarded as rather backward, but today it is highly progressive and has great establishments. The present tour is an illustration of the public spirit now being manifested. As a fact, one of the most interesting of the exhibits of this tour is this aeroplane, a new de Havilland, which has been entirely constructed and considerably improved upon in Geelong. This is said to be Geelong's newest industry. The aeroplane is the property of Messrs. Pratt, AFC and Clark AFC and is being piloted by Captain Clark. Mr. W. Caffrey is the publicity director. During yesterday forenoon, a number of residents, the majority being ladies, had trips in the aeroplane, the weather again being fine and the machine flying low over the town. The flights were discontinued owing to a weak axle spring which might have occasioned some injury to the wings in landing. Captain Clark informed us yesterday that he was obtaining a new spring and that flights would be resumed this morning from 9 o'clock till noon. In the evening, a free cinema entertainment was given in the town hall. The place was simply packed and many couldn't get no further than the porch, their share of the entertainment being to listen to the frequent cheering. Later the balcony door was open and a rush for that place of vantage took place, somewhat relieving the pressure below. Most interesting and striking views of Geelong were given, one of the most interesting features being the splendid moving pictures of the exciting scenes, the decorations and the crowds during the visit to Geelong of the Prince of Wales. The Prince could be clearly seen amid different surroundings and on a number of occasions with various incidents of the procession, reception and so on and his appearance was always a signal for an outburst of cheering. In rapid successions were shown streets and fine buildings and many attractions, parks, gardens and so on. The audience were greatly impressed with the evidence of a large and thriving population and great industrial and commercial activity. The massive buildings belonging to manufacturing, trading and other companies, stockyards with sheep and cattle, freezing works, wool and wheat warehouses, salt works and a great variety of prosperous concerns. There was a revelation of modern Geelong. During the progress of the demonstration, Miss N. Taylor gave bright renditions on the piano. Mr. Caffrey took occasion to point out the absolute necessity for decentralisation if the country were to permanently prosper and extend in population. He laid stress on the movement for the establishment of industries in rural centres, which would retain population in the country and prevent that congestion of population in Melbourne from which the country was suffering and by which its general development was being retarded. The cinema exhibition was not only an excellent entertainment, 
appreciated by all present, but it was also most instructive and interesting and valuable from an educational standpoint. Geelong is to be complimented on this enterprise. What happened to the plane? On Monday the 19th, the plane was seen high over Denali, heading for Donald. What happened with other towns visited might be hidden in other newspapers. We know the aeroplane arrived in Caniva on July 29. There were engine problems. An unsatisfactory test flight on Wednesday, August the 4th, resulted in engine being removed. A new engine arrived on Saturday the 7th, but was not fitted that day. That very night, strong winds and rain arose and the engineless plane broke loose and careened about a paddock over tree stumps and into a fence, destroying the plane. It was never repaired, but parts not souvenired by locals were used towards another plane. The farmer sued Pratt and Clark because his neatly ploughed ground had to be replowed due to the trampling horde of souvenir hunters. The air code DH6 number 1972 in our picture only existed in flying condition between July 8 and August 4, 1920. So where does Bessie fit into this? Well, Bessie is a Macklin photograph and the member had an idea and went back out to the Nolly race course to test it. He walked from the aeroplane photo site towards the Tymor Road crossed the road and followed a shallow gully northward that leads past the Prince of Wales mine dump towards Denali via the most direct route. The theory is that on Friday morning, July 16, 1920, Macklin took that very route back to town after taking the aircraft photograph, possibly with a single frame left on the film roll. To finish the roll, he took a picture of Bessie, who unwittingly and displaying no interest whatsoever became part of aviation history.